All right, friends, welcome. Uh, another play all three here in Titans League Gold. And a very important one here for both, but more important for El Matador in terms of survival. Uh, Matador was one of the promoted players who came up to gold through silver. And he has one win out of six games. However, he got 3 0 by Nikov, who is an incredible talent, who I think everyone believes is just going to go right back up to platinum. And then he lost to Hart 2 1. So getting a win off of Hart was huge. And then after Sebastian, the two players he will play are Target and Z40, who are two other players that were promoted from Silver. So uh, I played with El Matador in a team game tournament recently, got to know the guy, um, chatting to him pretty frequently these days. And I told him yesterday, I said, listen, dude, like, don't get too disheartened by the fact you have one win. The goal for you against Sebastian Get a win on the board minimum, and then just win your sets against the other two players, and you're safe. So, we'll see how it goes. But, um, anyways, he's gone for the Byzantines here on Costa Mountain, which is our first game. Sebastian, guys, he uh, beat Hart 2-1, and then he 3-0'd somebody. No, no, no. He, he, sorry, he beat Hart 2-1, and then he beat Target 2-1. And Target's a player I haven't casted yet. In uh, gold, anyways, but target very similar to Matador in the fact that that those wins that they were able to snag uh, and to avoid the sweep against big names could end up saving the day for them. So both players have gone for a dock. It's Byzantines versus Persians. Persians starting with the extra fifty wood and fifty gold, or sorry, not gold at all. Um, fifty wood and fifty food helps them to squeeze out that second fishing ship with this type of a build. This is actually seems to be the build, the go-to build for players on this map where you send a villager to dock right away when you build the TC uh, as it is a nomad start, and then you chop the stragglers for the fishing ship. Uh, I, I remember in the past, we saw a lot of players taking the hunt and going scouts and trying to take tons of map control, and water was not an afterthought, but it wasn't your primary build. It seems like it is the primary build for both of these two now. So I'm kind of feeling like this is going to be a battle for water in early feudal. If it is a battle for water, advantage Byzantines because of the stronger fires. Persians do have the stronger docks, though, which could be helpful. Yeah, Lumber Camp just now went up for Sebastian. Lumber Camp will have to go up for Matador here, but he, he squeezed in the third fishing ship. So he doesn't actually have the wood for the Lumber Camp yet. But he will likely send the villagers over here to the to the mountain, uh, the wood lines on the left side, and should be headed over there shortly. Whoa, Sebastian's up already? Dude, this, these build orders are ridiculous. I think it's it's borderline too fast. Like I don't know if it's worth it to kill the fish. There's still part of that old meta in my brain, but this is a ridiculous uptime. But basically, it's one lumber camp for the wood economy. And then he's probably going to locate a gold somewhere over here. Which he actually cannot find right now. Oh. Oh, wow. This gold is spawned pretty far away for him. I wonder if he'd be tempted to head over here for gold instead. Can he find it? Can he find it? Can he find it? Can he find it? He finds it. Okay, so finding that gold is huge. And he'll make a mining camp there. He'll go double dock on water. But remember... You're fast, but you have less economy working for you right now, right? So you're more at the limit in terms of what you can afford, which is how things tend to play out here. Yo, thank you, Debris. I'm a huge Matador fan. Matador is one of my favorite players in gold. And I think the guy, like, he has all the skills in terms of the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He has all the mechanical skill. He just needs experience. Uh, which something like gold is going to give him a lot of here. It, it didn't really look like there was anyone that could challenge him in silver either. He was playing really smooth. You want uh, like a slight bragging moment from me? I beat Matsador in our practice series. We played five games. I beat him 4-1. And then I proceeded to lose in the second round. So that was great. <laughs> but I beat this guy... In a practice series. So that's... If practice means anything, woo! But, unfortunately, practice doesn't mean anything. 
So yeah, this is, if I were to play this for the first time, having not seen any of these games, any games on this for months and months and months, this is kind of how I would play it. I think I would add in some fires with the Byzantines, but just like one or two. And then I would go for a stable into scouts. Now we're not seeing a stable yet from Matador, but he is going to lose his fish instantly. And that's obviously going to hurt. And then Sebastian could add more fishing ships now after taking water control. Again, there's not a ton of fish here uh, compared to some other water maps. So you do have to travel a long distance. But still, fishing economy is great. And it's additional eco units then for Sebastian. Good stuff. Look at res collected right now. I'll be curious. I'll pay attention to this too. Pretty even. So uh, food counts higher for Matador. We'll see what his, his plan is. As he has scouted with this camel. Knows the TC's probably around here. Found the wood line. And found the gold as well. And he's just going to go forward with a random spearman right now. Byzantines do have cheap, cheap, cheap trash units. So considering he's not on golds. And we're also seeing a range. I think we're just going to see spearmen and skirmishers. To try and disrupt Sebastian's economy. Sure, you did T90. We totally believe you. I wouldn't lie about that. It did happen. But, uh, you know, practice is practice, right? And I, I think my strength is strategy. And uh, I I was able to help some players uh, get good strategy and players who are more skilled than me then learn lessons and uh, would probably smash me now. <laughs> but no, I also underperformed a bit and uh, struggled a bit. In my series too always you never know what level you're going to bring on any given day right what makes the best players the best players is bringing their best level almost all the time so this is just awkward for the time being there is actually a weak villager there but even still i don't think that spearman's going to have high chances of success at killing it now, sebastian has seen only spearman this far and he is going to just make some skirms right now but El Matador is already making skirms. And Sebastian's still only on three fishing ships. And I I really do not think that committing to water this heavily is worth it. And I think players... Actually, remember this moment, okay? Remember me talking about this now once Platinum happens. Like, the top 24 in the world, I bet you we don't see these types of builds. I bet you we also don't see this many spearmen and skirms. This many spearmen and skirms could absolutely kill villagers. What is this? This is so messy. Matador's just waltzed in here. Now, he is kind of trapped, which he might end up regretting because the skirms from Sebastian are killing his spearmen. He hasn't actually killed any villagers yet. But there's so many weak ones in here, though. So maybe there's a chance for him if he could focus on it. The KD is not good for Matador. It's it's 2 to 10. But, uh, you know, he found one of the weak villagers in there. And he's not being hit. Uh, at home in terms of his economy, right? So he's able to take all these resources. Looks like he's taking some hunt out here and out here at the same time. Something that Sebastian isn't really able to do. And Sebastian now forced to drop a tower because he's surrounded by skirmishers. And look at these villagers go. So pretty ridiculous stuff as we see man-at-arms complete for Sebastian and he's thinking, what do I have to counter trash? I've got to go freaking infantry here. And man at arms should be good against skirms in low numbers, but skirms in high numbers with the spearmen, I mean, there's just so much military. It could still be very difficult to stop with just man at arms. What a weird game. I do want to check res collected right now. Yeah. So you win water, but then you lose all lands control, and that lands control gives players a lot of potential for hunt. Love the play from Matador thus far. Yeah, I think that winning 2-1 here would be massive for him. Uh, but he has to make sure he at least gets one win. And this is what happens when you go man-at-arms against this many skirms and spears. You just still lose them anyways. And Persians also aren't really known for their infantry. They're one of the few civs that are actually just stuck on longsword and castle age too. So Matador with lots of wood in the bank. Could also just think about making some archers. Looking to surround Sebastian as Sebastian has walled himself into what this map would consider the mountain. 
Good job from the walls, honestly, because this is annoying before. The tower also could slowly kill these units, and there's no real way for Matador to be able to get through there. But I think for now, he's probably just going to think about heading towards Castle Age. Ooh, okay. Man-at-arms, find a good hit. But dude, this is just, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm also loving how we're seeing the map utilized in terms of the extra hunt. I think the reason Matt's door is able to be so bold to take the hunt is because there's no real threat that Sebastian's ever really going to counterattack him here, right? So market being utilized. Uh, Matt's door will click up to Castle Age soon. The eco bat. What? What is this? Is Matador stealing a rhino with a spearman? What? Whoa, the speed on a spearman and a rhino is very similar. So the rhino is 0.96 and the spearman is one speed. So actually, he, <laughs> he could bring this rhino the whole way across the map. Or, in, I guess, like, over to his villagers. Now, he's distracted with other things at the moment, so it might not work out. And look at Sebastian chase it! <laughs> he's gonna kill it all the way out here, which is, I guess, further from the mill. What a ridiculous game. These man-at-arms is what Matador was looking for. Um, and Matador is on his way to Castle Age now. And Sebastian up to five fishing ships now, so now I feel like, you know, water's paying off a little bit more for him. And the Spearman numbers, well, they're on their own, so not what they would want here. Spearman numbers still probably enough to kill these man-at-arms. This has been a very messy game for both players here. And Sebastian's going to use the market, buy some food, and then click up to Castle Age as well. Still want to check res collected here. Matador's collected a thousand more resources. And he's going to bring skirms over to these villagers, skirmishers! Dang, man. I mean, the Spearman that ended up dying earlier is the real MVP because he brought the Rhino over here. I'm pretty sure Sebastian had just told his villagers after this deer, you go kill the Rhino when the Rhino was here. And he's just now realized after hearing the attack signal that his villagers were all the way over there. That probably makes no sense to him. The stable's going up now for Matador. And that's probably going to be for knights. Uh, could be for camels if he thinks his opponent's going to have knights. Byzantines do have very cheap camels. And I, I love his position. I think a second town center in this area to protect the resources would be perfect. His economic situation's awesome. And Sebastian is on two barracks going towards long swordsmen with Persians, which is... Kind of a meme, honestly. It, it is like, it is not something that you really see people talk about with serious tones in their voice. And the reason for that is they all they get is long swords. And in this game, typically you want to go with unit lines that are good for you in the long run, um, which is not the case here. So man at arms going to go down. Uh, here, man at arms are going down. We do have a monastery for Sebastian. Very close to all this. I mean, if this gets denied, I think he's just in big trouble. I think Squires now. Um, we have double monastery now to try and get monks out here to counter these knights, but the push continues here from Matador. Two town centers. Could even go for the third. Eco's looking pretty solid. Farm count could maybe get a little bit higher here, but he's really focused on this push. Heated shot. Anytime you download a recorded game pack, it has to come from one of the player perspectives. So I downloaded the recorded game pack and it gives me six games. So it gives me three games from Matador and three games from Sebastian. So if there's an age up, it is always in whatever language they have. So I guess if it was in Spanish, it was because the game I'm going off of here is Sebastian. Long swords, baby, from Persians. I don't think this should work unless the monks get conversions on the knights. Monks are actually more important than the longswords here. But the skirmishers could be used against these monks. Uh, maybe? Kind of awkward. I think Matador is really fortunate there that he didn't lose knights to those monks. Really fortunate as well that he could maybe get out of here with these skirms. 
He's going to be on three TCs. How is Sebastian... How is his eco count similar right now? It's pretty ridiculous. I honestly don't even understand it. The Persian eco is pretty strong. The one TC does produce faster, right? Persian TCs start to work faster from... Um, uh, I think it's in Feudal Age, right? 5% faster in Feudal, 10% faster in Castle. Oh, this is... Uh, that would be such an amazing find for Matador. You could tell he's thinking about these resources, but he wasn't actively paying attention to that. And the push from Sebastian starting to really build up here. It's still a lot of long swords that haven't been dealt with. He builds a siege workshop with a purpose there. Knights could still kill the longswords anytime they wish to, and they're going to here. Sebastian pulled out of position. But something is going to be needed for these monks right now. Persians also lack sanctity, so their monks are not all that strong. But yeah, what a frustrating moment. You, you thought to look for this, and then you had the knight over here, and you weren't able to deny the TC. This is never really an exciting situation if you're in Sebastian's shoes. Or, or sorry, Matador's shoes. Alright, so Matador is going to add his own monks. And he kills a couple more villagers over here. But he does get pulled out of position by Sebastian. And oh man, the monk goes down. And wow, this is actually working. This push is actually working. El Matador, he doesn't want to engage against this because of all the monks. And pretty soon, the Siege is going to be able to attack this TC. Monks are so important, man, to our meta these days. And I, I don't know about long swords. As the Light Cav looks like it got a kill and then got converted. I Actually, if I, I want to go back and look at this. I think Matador took an engagement. Oh, no, I'm wrong. Okay, I was going to say that he took an engagement while it was just a scout. But yeah, four monks will convert faster than just one monk, so it makes sense there that Sebastian doesn't lose everything. So, I guess El Matador is not going to be able to make more light cap because he's lost his stables now. He never really made many in the first place, and here comes the siege push. Skirm's still trying to disrupt the farms and whatnot. Kind of awkward for Sebastian there, but more awkward for El Matador, who has the villager lead, but still is under a lot of pressure right now. Having said that, he's underneath the TC and Sebastian's looking at the fight on the front. So some nice vil picks here from Matador, who I assume is paying attention to that. Yeah, he was paying attention to that. That was a calculated move. Skirms go down now. A siege could be killed by the longswords, but longswords are much slower than something like a knight, right? And Matador gets a nice shot there. Also tries with an attack rounds. And we see a castle behind this for El Matador because he knows he's about to lose the siege. Panic time. I can't believe what we're seeing. If this castle doesn't go up for El Matador, he's lost the game. And even if the castle goes up, his TC could still go down. And here a light cav is killing some villagers right now, which he notices. And here we've still got knights killing longswords and there's not any monks around. And this game is ridiculous. Manganel here for Sebastian. Going to deny the castle. Nightmare for Matador. Matador, you just got to get the castle down, dude. You just have to go for it. You can't not build this castle. You can't. That, that has to go up. No! This is, I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> what is happening? Persian longswords. But wait. Oh, he could have killed the monks. Matador, he's, he's scared of monks. He doesn't like monks at all. Not a fan of Arena. And he's going to make another TC here. I mean, honestly, what he really needs is he needs light cap, but he lost the stables. So he just, he says, okay, castle's denied for now at 90%. New TC here, new TC here. He is on four TCs. So there's that, but like he needs army. This is ridiculous. So Sebastian has to make sure that he doesn't let this go up at all costs. Sebastian killing his own longsword right now, which isn't the greatest. Um, score leads massive for Sebastian because of the KD and, and whatnot, but he still is at 70 eco on one TC. He's did a great job on one town center. He drops the second TC and probably feels natural for a third now, right? Just expand. Oh, he is. He's on three actually, right? Cause he's had this one for a while. So I don't know if it feels natural for a fourth, but 
At least the resource balance is there, so we could maybe consider it. Um, Matador, I think, feeling like he could maybe finish this castle. He's considering it. And he's trying to take out the ram, because the foundation will stay there otherwise. Has his own monks to convert these long swords, and gets one conversion. And now his knights... Oh, God. He's going to lose all the knights. Oh, no. That is so bad. But now he needs to convert them. Oh, and he's trying, but Sebastian has deleted some units, but now we've got a light cav. This game's so messy. The, the light cav's actually dead, though. What is happening? We've got a longsword that was converted. The longsword that was converted is going to help against the siege. The siege is going to go down. Matador, make a run for the castle. Can he do it? Guys, I don't know how to make sense of this game. This game is ridiculous. We do have a new castle here for Matador. That castle is at 90%. Do you try it? Do you delete it? Do you get some stone back? I don't know. 2k gold in the bank for Sebastian, who eventually is going to have to switch out a longsword, though. Kind of hard to know what to go for against the Byzantines. But I feel like, open with your strengths. Maybe go for some knights. El Matador. He said it wasn't great to see the scoreline after the first two rounds and to lose five out of six games. But, again, he went up against Nikov. And then he went up against Hart. And he did get that one win versus Hart, which was huge. He really needs to go in with more than one light cap. Like, I feel like there's been four or five different instances where he's gone in with one light cap against the monks. Where if he had just three, the monks would have gone down. And I can't help but feel like the monks are the reason the knights didn't work. Initially, if he would have just had the light cap, none of this would have happened. Like, I think the castle would have gone up. Everything would have been fine. But anyways, he is imping. He does still have more villagers. And in terms of res collected, he still collected more this game. So credit to him for that. What a confusing game. If I'm Byzantines, my army composition's got trash in it. I know cataphracts are great against longswords, but come on, dude. It's Persians. Don't make lots of cataphracts because you see a couple longswords. Surely the opponent's going to have to give up on this. Again, one light calf. So we see the same story as before. And one light cap able to get the job done. There you go. Now the cataphracts could run out and maybe kill these longswords. I don't know where they are. I just see... Okay, they're in the castle. There they go. Guys, El Matador has 53 on food. He lost town setters. He lost so many vills. And he's still got more of them. And say goodbye to your longsword, Sebastian, who's still two minutes away from Imp. So I guess this just goes late game. And, and then at that point, we're comparing techs and, and late game control. Right now, I, I think Matador has got a big reason to maybe castle this when he sees the TC from Sebastian. Doesn't seem like Matador really knows what Sebastian's going to be doing. But... You know, uh, you're, if you're not going to place the castle here, and he is going to place the castle here, you'd probably place it here. Sebastian knows this area is exposed. He even actually made a, an outpost here, so he's going to aim to raid this. And that's something that's going to be harder for our Maltador, or is it? Because there's no castle here, and there's villagers exposed here for Sebastian. And this castle will go up on that gold, and there's just a whole lot of economy for Sebastian that's actually on the shoreline here instead of in the north. He actually has most of his eco on the shoreline. And so Matador is just raiding it. While also being raided over here, but he does react. And so it's Cataphracts and Light Cav for Matador, but Camel's on the way because he now sees Sebastian's going for table units. And Camel's are really cheap for the Byzantines, so I like the play. <laughs> you see how Matador made a petard there for a second? Dang. So, quick look, by the way, at APM. I don't know how he does it, but El Matador... I, I can tell you how he does it. So, um, you guys have probably never seen his POV before. But he clicks his armies a lot. Like, watch his army. You can kind of tell with the way some of the units re reposition. He's just like, click, 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 click. He he's just a nervous clicker. 
and that ends up with the highest APM, I believe, in the game. I think he's more APM than any player. Obviously, <laughs> some of those clicks could be seen as unnecessary, but it's speed, and people are impressed with speed, and El Matador using the speed right now. And trying to use get some nice uh, raids in. And he's now evened up the Eco KD. Does see that there's a castle going up here from Sebastian. Sebastian just trying to control that gold. I, I think the worry for El Matador is... I guess this castle protects this flank, and this castle protects this flank. But this area is still very exposed, so he's going to drop a castle there now. What do you do as Persians? I think you have to try Halberdier here. And Sebastian is thinking that, obviously, as he's dropping the barracks, but... It's like anything you do can be countered by the Byzantines. If you make infantry, there's cataphracts. If you make cav, there's camels or halbs. And not only do Byzantines have the option, but they have a discount on a lot of those things. And Persians have a very limited tech tree. It's not like we're looking at a civilization that has great ranged units as well, which Byzantines could also counter. But Persians are kind of hard stuck on maybe halb, the cavalier line, and siege. And even then, their siege isn't that good. They do have good enough gunpowder, but so do Byzantines. And even though it was a crazy push from Sebastian, El Matador is pushing this back. And he's going to take a great fight here. There's no Cavalier for Sebastian. He's in him, but he just has Castle Age upgrades on his units. And El Matador, who went through so much earlier against Persians with the Longsword Siege push, has held on here. He'll take this castle out. He's taken out some of the trebs. And he's at 200 population. Crazy stuff. It's cataphracts and it's camels. But he's also getting techs to, to switch into some ranged units. As we could see more archer ranges maybe towards the middle. I think Sebastian would have maybe lost the fight anyways. But he really needed to at least have cavalier. The fact that he was only on night that whole time, the fact that there was no imp armor or any imp attack upgrades was really, really bad. He had control, but then it just all is withered away. And again, good luck breaking the Byzantines here, right? He tries to go in with the Cavalier, maybe for the Trebs. El Matador is ready for that. Elite Cataphract is on the way! 155 vills for Matador, 102 for Sebastian, and he's dropping villagers big time. I don't think you can counter Elite Cataphract. You can counter Elite Cataphract maybe cost effectively with help, but if El Matador has the gold income, and he might not because there's raids here, you get enough Cataphracts and they'll even stomp the house. It's a risky game, though, to rely fully on Elite Cataphract. I think we should see some ranged units mixed in for El Matador. But I like the confidence, and I like the damage he's doing here. Seal hasn't noticed that he's losing villagers in the south, so he could lose 20 or so villagers here. Has gold here? Might not have gold here, but has it available? Also has gold available here. What a game, guys. Sebastian's still not giving up. He's just got one trebuchet here, though. And the castle's going to do quite a bit of damage here. It has six kills, seven kills now due to Bracer being in. And these Cataphracts and Camels still haven't been killed. And the GG is called... <laughs> El Matador holds on, takes it late game with the Byzantines, and gets the job done. Honestly, this is a big one for his confidence. Because had he lost this game, I know exactly the moment I'd be looking back to. He really should never have these types of struggles against the longswords and the siege. But I'm going to take you to the moment. I kind of... I alluded to it earlier. Okay, so where is it? Um, Right about... Okay, so now he knows his opponent's going monks, right? This is the moment. So he ends up going light calf. Eventually, it took a long time. And maybe he didn't have the food. I don't know. But he went with one light calf. That whole time. And I think if he goes for four light calves... He's in, in a moment like this, he's got what? Eight or so knights, seven knights. Okay, seven knights. Even still, I think you move in with the light cap, you kill the monks, 
and then knights are able to take an effective trade. You keep your stable up. This is less effective for Sebastian. Your castle's never denied. I, I just think Lycab were really what was lacking there. But then again, maybe his food count wasn't there. It's still a great win for him. But again, an important one, because I think that would just really break your spirits losing against the units that Sebastian was making. For Sebastian, I feel as though he probably just committed too heavily into water. I'm still not convinced that going that quickly for the fish is worth it on this map. And, you know, he lost land control against a civilization that has a lot of options. And what a great performance from him to push. But he wasn't able to kill off this guy. And even though Matador lost more eco in the mid game, he was expanding pretty heavily. More wood, food, gold, and stone collected there. So Matador gets a really important victory in the first game. Byzantines versus Persians. And Sebastian falls back to a map that we've seen a lot so far in gold. And we've seen it a lot from him. Uh, in his previous series where he played against Hart and won the series 2-1, Sebastian uh, played as the Portuguese on Spiral and ended up getting a victory. So here he is again. Again, Portuguese. And then we've got uh, Matador playing as the Hindustanis. Not a sieve that I was really expecting to see here. Uh, but I think Hindustanis can be good with booming and good playing into stable units, which you tend to see a lot of here. Uh, earlier today, we saw uh, camels from Gurjaras and Malians. The Hindustanis have pretty strong camels to work with. Two tiles of gold and stone next to your starting town center. And then the name of the game is expanding to the extra golds and stones. Portuguese spend less gold on their armies, so you could get by, uh, you could produce more army with what you start with. And then also, I think the fact that there's a big area of berries is great for the Portuguese because you get wood income while also bringing in berries. So, not to mention their great tech tree. Portuguese is just a really solid sieve to take map control with. Both players have broken out the sheep and the cow, which is kind of a tiny little feature of this map. To start it off. Uh, did I enjoy Australia? Yeah. And thank God I did. Can you imagine if I was like, no, it was horrible. And I had to travel 30 plus hours to get there. <laughs> I had a really good time. Um, I mean, it, it was kind of like a three-part trip. We were in more tropical area, I guess you could say, of Australia for the first five days. And then we were in Brisbane for five days. And then we were in um, Sydney for five days. And it was awesome. Uh, diving the Great Barrier Reef was better than I even would have dreamed, honestly. It was just beautiful, beautiful dives. We got to see so many cool things. Uh, got some pretty cool stories out of it as well, as the conditions were quite rough. And we did some night dives. <laughs> uh, which... One of them, I thought we were going to die. The swells were insane. <laughs> the wind was insane. I cannot believe they let us go out there. But uh, anyways, I survived. It's also pretty wild. Uh, the, the difference between the sea life at night versus the day. Like, I figured it would be, right? But I'm not a marine biologist like my fiance is, so I don't have as much sea knowledge. But dude, you're down there at night, and it's all the predators are out, right? So just like, I think we probably saw 30 plus sharks on our whole trip. It was a three day diving trip where we, we lived on a boat uh, as we were like two and a half hours off the coast. But yeah, we saw a lot of sharks. I, we didn't see that many big sharks. Uh, so you guys are imagining I'm swimming next to like eight foot nine sharks. No, no, the majority of the sharks we saw were smaller, so maybe two to three feet. Uh, but the thing about those sharks is they're not like, they're not like, uh, how do I, I don't, I don't know how to describe this. Like the big sharks, they, they tend to stay away. They don't want to be around all the plebs, right? The big sharks, they, they kind of command respect. The tiny sharks, they're just swimming with all the other predator fish trying to get some, some grub. So you got to see, uh, the smaller sharks a lot more. That's all. Man eaters? No, 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 no man eaters, thankfully. Or at least I didn't get eaten, so. We lost a couple people. We just thought they drowned, you know. But maybe they got eaten. <laughs> kidding, kidding, kidding. Uh, anyways, so yeah, Australia was really cool. I'm sure I'll have more time for stories. But I had a good time. Both these guys have gone for docks thus far. And that is common on this map. 
three fishing ships for Matador. The water generation for El Matador really hurt him here. Because he couldn't find a shore fish. So he can't have a villager here. And then two of the fish are over here. Honestly, a lot of that's just scouting. But... Yeah, I mean, still a bit unfortunate for him. I think Sebastian's had a slightly easier time. So what Sebastian did against Hart was he opened archers and he walled up a lot. I haven't seen Matsador play this map yet, but I feel like the natural thing to do with Hindustanis would be to go scouts here. Uh, is it true that everything will try to kill you in Australia? I mean, there are a lot of things that can kill you, yes. But, you know, we, we, like, I went, we went on a pretty long hike, um, up a, up a mountain at one point, and we didn't see any snakes or, like, any, there are these big dinosaur-looking birds called cassowaries. I don't think they kill people, but they look like they could if they tried. We didn't see any of those. Um, everything was pretty good. Like, the rules that I follow as a Floridian are pretty much the rules I followed while I was in Australia. So it's like, don't go into like deep brush. Don't go, you know, into thick vegetation because there's probably some things in there that will bite you. So, and the, the, the biggest thing about Australia, I think they've got lots of insects as well, but it's like majority of the time, the snakes, they could kill you if they bite you. So not a big snake guy, personally. All right, so Scout's engaging here. Very fast uptimes for both players. Very similar builds. And Matador is going to see it's a range opening for Sebastian. So Sebastian, again, sticking to what has worked for him thus far on this map. I was not expecting players to leave this map open as frequently as they did, guys. Like, this is, seems to be a map where everyone's comfortable because we're seeing it a lot. And it's 11 map map pool for play all threes. There's a lot of bans that the players do, and it just hasn't been a map that people are banning. Like, I think I've only seen five or six of the maps thus far. We've seen a decent amount of migration, spiral, uh, saw fractal, which we'll see in this series as well. That'll be the third game. Um, graveyards. I guess I'd have to go down the list, but I wasn't expecting a map that's this unique to be preferred. So I'm pleasantly surprised by that. Sebastian being chased down at the moment. Again, just a very passive opening, which archer openings tend to be. The villagers exposed there for Sebastian, and I, initially he had two villagers here. So that was from the Dark Age, and he thought that, that, that he would have some power in numbers. But, oh, wow. What a save. That's actually insane. I didn't know that was a possibility there. Actually, the shorefish was almost gone, too, so he's going to get out of here. That was very impressive. El Matador just assumes that thing is probably still walled in right now. Um, El Matador is just going to expand to the food area here. And he'll see... He won't see anything over here for Sebastian. But yeah, what Sebastian did against Hart was he didn't take the risk to go to the berries. He just walled up and he farmed. Oh. He's using the spears at home right now, and he is going to move out with his archers with one spearman. Added a fire galley to protect the fish, because otherwise the scouts could be annoying. And the kid from Uruguay, I think I can call him a kid. He was born in 2002. If you're born after the year 2000, you're a kid to me. Is that fair? Ugh, that shudders. This is so young. Anyways, I'm an old man now. Uh, and Matador is unable to break through because the kid from Uruguay, who may or may not be a kid, depending on your definition of it, got his walls down. But he's not able to do any damage with this army, and it has been all El Matador so far in this game. And El Matador hasn't lost any fishing ships, right? El Matador, not really that exposed right now. He is good farming eco. He hasn't collected more resources, interestingly enough. But you feel like, in theory, he will do so because he has this. I don't know. There's also huge benefit in just not being able... Not being exposed to any attack. 
Town Watch was researched by Matador, and he's building houses all the way along here. He's also building outposts for vision because he knows that it's possible Sebastian will sneak. Uh, Debra, you remember, it's a play all three. So whether or not Sebastian wins this, we will see a third game. So you don't need to worry about rooting for a player just to see a third game. Every, ge every win matters, and you play uh, every opponent in your group three times. So at the conclusion of the group stage, everyone will have played uh, 15 games. And what happens from there is all based on those results. And we've seen instances where a player who is a massive underdog is able to just snag one win. And that one win makes a difference between them surviving in the long run and staying up in gold or being relegated. So every win counts here. And ooh, I think Matador went a little bit too far here. Is no Spearman, guys. I think if he had a spear or two, maybe he could force the scouts back and get away. A great job from Sebastian. Again, played into walls, wasn't too greedy. And was just, he timed the scout addition perfectly. And he's happy to move out now. And El Matador has to be really careful here because he could lose all of his villagers here to these archers now that he's going to lose most of his skirms. And didn't try and add a spearman. It's tricky to do that now too, right? Because if you do that, then the archers are going to be there. So instead, he's just going to trade away his skirms. He knows he'll lose them. So he's trying to kill the archers with them. But oh man, that's rough. This is a rough time to lose control, but he's going to leave uh, the berries all together. And he is on the way to Castle Age. And just like they arrive at Feudal Age at similar times, they're going to arrive at Castle Age at similar times. Man, these guys are so good. This is funny. Look at all the vision he has down here. I want him to research Town Patrol. <laughs> In Castle Age, he'll be able to see half the map. Dang. So, kind of a forgotten bonus of the Hindustanis these days is that their uh, scout line, or I guess their Lycav, get extra Pierce Armor. I'm actually second-guessing myself on if the devs removed that from them. I don't think they did. I think that still exists. I think that's still a thing. Anyway, so if you see archers, I think adding uh, additional scouts here makes a lot of sense. Uh... The scout number right now is 6 for El Matador, but I think I remember a scout in the south not doing anything. I mean, that's weak. But that would be the scout you'd want to be scouting the map. Yeah, he'll want to clamp down on these archers before the archer mask gets upgraded. Um, Is on stone, too, so maybe thinking about Ghulam. I don't feel as though the Ghulam is that realistic here, though, because you have to get a castle, which still requires so much more stone. And then your opponent can just add knights in combination with crossbows anyways. So it feels like when the Ghulams were initially introduced with the Hindustanis, they were just busted in some matchups, but it doesn't really even feel like it's a it's an option right now. Like, I think I'm not seeing it in pro games at all anymore. And they would just take a lot of time to get that castle up. Like Cav, and now just the first few Lage Armors on the way for El Matador. But again, he's got vision everywhere. So he shouldn't be surprised by anything. And Sebastian's going to place the TC there on the berries. And he's going to place the TC here on the gold. But what he can see is outposts everywhere from El Matador. So Matador knows the armies here for uh, Sebastian. And he's actually sent his weak light cap here to try and deny the TC. But unfortunately for him, it's weak. So I'd still feel awkward about this. Like, Sebastian's very much in the dark on this. So he's going to just wall in his bills just in case. Okay, I wanted to see the light cap. Okay, so yeah, they don't have the extra armor on their light cap line anymore. Yeah, okay, so so what I, I remember they gave the Hindustanis the final armor in Imp. Um, but I, I forgot that that was kind of what they'd taken away. Did you see koalas in Australia? Yeah, I held a koala, actually. Which was an interesting experience. So the light cover is essentially raiding tools right now. And again, what a close game. 
Both players going to three town centers. Both players town centering the extra golds. Good, good walling here from Sebastian, who's just done a really good job not taking damage this game. He hasn't actually been that offensive. But what he has done is, is he's... Uh, or what he has been able to do is he's been able to keep his archer mask going. And I think El Matador... Sometimes you just use this uh, light cav as a distraction. Whether or not you lose, it's not that big a deal to you. You just don't want your opponent to go this way. And he didn't even really need to throw it away there. Nice play. Guys, these guys are really good. In case you haven't realized this, we have seen some games in gold where it's like, okay, there's clearly a gap between these two. And Sebastian's got the lead right now. I also think the Portuguese are just insane as a civilization but this is a really good game right now i think that the thing that's concerning is we see cav archers from the portuguese which is very weird to me not something i was expecting to see but um i would like to see a little bit more army here from el matador but he is building up seed so it feels like maybe he'll get like two or three mangoes with his light cav and Two or three mangas and the light cav could maybe push those crossbow numbers. Oh my god. He doesn't know the siege workshops there. He does oh! oh, are you kidding me? If that's me, I lose all my crossbows. <laughs> wow. Sick stuff there. Also, it's gonna be another villager kill from the light cav from Matador. Killed one on the farm. Killed one there on the berries. There go the cav archers. And suddenly there's four more sea or three more siege weapons. Oh man, but Matador, dude, there's a knight now. Like this is th this is not something that should ever happen. Especially when your TC is here. You should be close to your town center with this. Oh god, this is such a costly loss. Sebastian hasn't lost a unit yet. Okay, he lost a unit to a conversion. Oh man, that was so good for Sebastian. Killing Three mangonels, or maybe four mangonels, was it? It just left his crossbows at home the entire time to defend from that. That was a big mistake from El Matador because if he's he's got army combined with the siege, it's really tough to engage against. Pretty crazy. I, I think it's a situation where it's so bold and so ridiculous, you'd never actually expect that you're going to lose your weapons there because no one's going to stick around. But you did stick around. I want to check El Matador's vision again. Both players are on stone. It looks like at least the Cav Archers went down here. Um, yeah, both players are on stone. And the middle gold is really important. You can build in the center of this area. Just not on the sides of it. Light Cav trying to use their mobility. Trying to raid. This is the same group of Light Cav that we saw at the start of Castle. We haven't really seen much more. And Sebastian's just tracking it the whole time. I heard something die. I think he might have deleted one of his own units. I don't know. 33 on food versus 45 on food. Wow. I mean, a lot of that food income is actually right here for Sebastian. And if you check res collected, a food count is paid off big time for him. He's actually collected more of every resource except stone. Is that the case? Yeah, that's the case, but Vatsador has either spent more stone or maybe sold some of it. He killed a villager next to the outpost. Oh, yeah, yeah. He tried to delete uh, Palisade. I, I heard him delete something at the same time. I just didn't see the bill. I thought it was over here. Yeah, Sebastian killed one of his own villagers. What a noob. <laughs> but oh, he's going to walk forward and build a castle here. I I'm just like... Like, there's been so much siege in this game for Matt Snow, if you think about it. He's got three Manganels now at home, but he lost three earlier. He's had so much siege, but he's never moved out to use it. He's just stayed at home. And had he moved out, like, had he had the siege just patrolling around here, this castle might have never gone up. This is a really bold castle. You've only crossbowmen. But Sebastian's able to get away with it. And it's, it's going to be an uphill climb here for Matador from here because, again, we don't have large army count. His siege will be 
ineffective against imp archers because of the micro Sebastian has and the upgrades he's going to have. And you don't see an easy way for you to really push this castle back. Does have a couple, just two camels in the mix here. Still trying to be active, still getting vision in the north. He'd essentially have to use the sides to raid. If he could go full Hussar and raid in the in the north and raid in the south and then raid the middle, that would be his chance in this game. And then the way you you counter that, if you're Sebastian, besides actually just countering the units, which he might consider with, with Halb or something, is you just push constantly. And your next castle is like kind of in his face. Because he's got a big enough crossbow ball where there's nothing that Matador will be able to do about it once these are upgraded to Arbalest. And God, another moment there where Sebastian, he just knows the army's there. He's so active with his military. Again, just imagine once he's got extra attack from Arbs, extra range. And Megan L will be too little, too late possibly. But I mean, still two minutes away from Imperial Age is Matador. Um, but, he, you know, he's gotten through here. He's finding some nice villager kills. Sebastian still is to get the Arbalest upgrade. He's still got to get the Trebs out and choose a target. That is the... Oh, that's a handcart TC, so I think we'll be fine. And so this is something. I would just... Personally, because you're going to run on low on gold in the long run, I think I would just go for more stables and hope that Straight Hussar does it for you. Matador definitely has the wood. So I think being on two stables right now is going to hurt. If you could get up to six or so, it could be helpful. Killed seven villagers over the last couple minutes. There's the first Manganel going down to the crossbows. Um, Yeah, I am aware that uh, kangaroo, or not kangaroos, uh, koalas are riddled with chlamydia. <laughs> It's not transferable to human, though. It's Koala Chlamydia, so... I'm safe. Don't worry. Holding the Koala thing was cool. It's cool to say I did it, but, like... They smelled, dude. <laughs> they smelled, and they, they're they kind of, like, weird, bony animals. <laughs> I couldn't get that excited about that. We're going to see another castle for Sebastian. He's actually getting cab upgrades. He might be thinking about Cavalier, and why not when you have the gold? See these stables? Like, these are the only stables that Matador has right now until this moment. So he's producing the cab, but they're just going to die when they leave the stables. He's been pushed all the way back. And I'm not seeing any raids hitting Sebastian right now. So I, th that is really what I felt would have to be the way back for Matador. Just, he just does not have the army. I think back to Castle Age when he had the siege. Cab and Knight in the middle could have maybe denied the castle, could have maybe given him that gold control. And he does have the final imp armor, but he doesn't have the Hussar upgrade. It's still just a unit on 80 HP and 7 base attack. And Arbalest upgrade, well timed for Sebastian. He doesn't have any armor upgrades on the Arbs, so he will lose these things a lot faster than you would normally use them. Uh, lose them. But still gonna just switch into the next unit anyways. Which is going to be Cavalier. And I think if Matador had more map control, then he could just go Camels to counter the Cavalier. But he is he's one castle to defend himself. So there's not really a lot stopping Sebastian from just sending the Cavan to raid all these different areas. Like down here as well as a big target. Oh, and he could also just go for the Trebs. Rip. That hurts. Because if he, if he had Trebs pushing this castle back, he could maybe get a bit of a snowball going. But three Trebs down the drain there. And Sebastian... He took control with an army composition that didn't do much for him in the long run. In, the, in game one. But in this game, in Feudal Age, he was on stable units and archer units. He's still on stable units and archer units. And it, it just makes sense. Portuguese. Overall, makes sense. They're one of the best civs in the game right now. They're really strong. I also love how he took almost all the berries. Which is such an important thing with Portuguese. 
More ranges coming up on the front. More Cavalier finding kills. Couple camels and... I guess he converted the camel and Cavalier down here finding raids. Population is actually still similar. Again, you know, can you really justify the camels now when you don't have that much more gold? And, I mean, he has to make camels, but then you're still running into archers, which are so good against the camels. Um. Anyways, I'm sorry. I got a little distracted here. I had to check something on my phone, but... Not seeing an easy way back here for El Matador. I think Sebastian does need to make sure that Matador can't sneak over here, but it does feel like he's close enough now where he would see any mad dash over there. I think Matador would almost have to have built up here already. Or been down here already. If he's in both of those areas around this time, then maybe he's got a better economy. I like... Sebastian's Cavalier timing. He actually started to get the text for Cav before he got Arbalest. Which I think sometimes I'll question, like, make sure you, you fully upgrade your main unit line before you switch into another one. But he still was able to get Arbalest at the crucial timing before he got engaged upon here. And I think he's just, just playing it safe now. Could even see him consider buying a castle. Uh, no, he's already got a castle here. Just saying, maybe buying a defensive castle for an area he felt he was vulnerable. Matsador does have a villager here. But he might be thinking about going for a raid there with the light caps, but he's actually going to try and engage upon this group of arbs. And there's still so many of them, man. Portuguese with gold control. So you have more gold control, and then all of the units you want to make that cost gold are cheaper on gold. While Matador is hitting at one on gold. And I think that's this one guy over here right now. I mean, to take it even one step further, even if you kill Sebastian's army, you have no possible way of pushing the castles now. This is, uh, this is a bad spot to be in. <laughs> Especially now that Halb is in, which is a straight-up counter to anything on a horse or camel. Which is the only thing El Matador is doing. It's probably just, you know, letting his nerves set a little bit. He's still going to try. He knows he's probably dead. He's looking at his pop. He's still at 160 pop. So still playing on for that reason. But I'm not seeing a way back. Looks like Sebastian's going to get a win to tie this up. This is a good raid, though. Just a couple stables over here have done a lot. Still can't kill the death ball. Halb Arbalest is still horrible for you. But, you know, you killed some things. But I, I think once Matt's door starts to lose his main economy, it's when we'll probably see him tap out. <laughs> Great game. A, a game where El Matador will look back to the Siege and Castleage as uh, the weak point for him. Normally, Sebastian would have to work a little bit harder in this game to get this castle up. At least be forced into making some knights to, to engage against the siege. He never really had to. He was just able to waltz across the map. All the siege was out of position and very defensive. Great raids here. So, raids still adding up. Light cap versus fire ship. Woo woo. Fun fun. Um, the main death ball still progressing into Matador's base. He's losing things faster than he's killing them. Maybe one last go for him. He's thinking hand cannons could be helpful against uh, some of the infantry that's out here. He's in the back corner of the map where there's tons of grass, by the way. Whoa, what is this? I have never seen grass go off the map like this. Be careful where you plant your grass, guys. Who's throwing seeds off the planet? And what did that get stuck into? <laughs> What in the world? That is not realistic. You know, that has really ruined this game for me. But it's okay. Those farmers aren't going to have much of a life if this army continues to progress forward. And yeah, GG's called. Sebastian ties it up. That was pretty clinical from him the whole way through. It's interesting to me how he gave up the berries and then took it later on in the game. He's like, let's make sure I'm defensive. Make sure I take army control, and then I take the berries. Where Sebastian went aggressive early, or sorry, where Matador took 
went aggressive early, was utilizing the barriers, and then eventually had to leave them. Um, it didn't feel like Matador was hugely comfortable with the Hindustanis, but I think maybe he was expecting more of an out-and-out knight civilization from Sebastian, where the Hindustanis could have been a good guess. I, I didn't look at the draft or anything. It's kind of hard for me to know. But 6k more gold collected from Sebastian that game. And again, all of his gold units are discounted. He took very good trades the whole way through. And he ties it up 1-1. All right. So game three, this is El Matador's home map. And he's got the Goths here. So I, I imagine that El Matador might treat this similar to Socotra, if you guys know that map. And he might, might want to make this extremely messy through the middle. Goths get loom instantly. And the players are pretty close together. And Sebastian's not messing around here. You only get one elephant on this map. So he's just going to bring in this elephant right away. He doesn't want a player playing as Goths to be able to steal it. So uh, Matador in the red. I, I do want to talk. There's going to be a lot of laming here. But just because players might not have or viewers might not have seen too much of this map. Uh, I just got to explain some of the aspects to it. So you see all the water out here. You can access the water by chopping through the reeds. And whoa, look at them. That's kind of trippy when I zoom in like that. Anyways, 50 wood per reed, which makes it very doable to chop through. And if you're going to do that, you want to build your lumber camp here. And there's kind of a meta for that. I think both players should probably know that. Uh, the villager for Matador is currently walling in the berries for Sebastian. And then Sebastian has actually brought a villager forward to try and shoot these deer down. But he doesn't have loom, and he has been found f by Matador. I think Matador was headed over to build that lumber camp. And this villager gets quick walled in. Well played, Sebastian, as he just gets loom for now. Yeah, I prefer the Malians, right? Like, cheaper wood buildings, a uh, bit of a gold boost, gold income boost uh, with the way their bonus works there. Uh, very good tech tree, great archers, great knights. Um, they just, it's more exciting for me. Goths, their hunt does last longer now. But still, in terms of their units, you're mainly thinking about infantry. So we'll see if he's going to be able to get there. So Sebastian, successful laming thus far. And the villager from Matador, I think, got hit by the TC there. So now she's pretty weak. But over here, uh, Matador could kill this villager. It's going to be really tough. If he just blocks with the scout, yeah. That's a really nice kill. I've never really known Matador to be a big quick waller. He's super fast. He's the fastest player in the game. But I haven't seen him land many big quick walls. I think this is going to be too little too late anyways because the scout's coming over. And yeah. So, Scout for Sebastian, 24 HP. Same for El Matador. Uh, it's not the case anymore, actually. And Lumber Camp went up a while ago for Matador. And, again, you, you, he has the potential, if he's shift-queuing his villagers, telling them which tree to go to, to just cut right through. Which means he should be there faster than Sebastian, because Sebastian just got here. Okay. So, both players lost a villager... Matador has already walled in the berries. Um, he kind of thinks job done. His scout is also stronger. So he's trying to push a zebra from the other side of the map over to his base. Dude, attack Sebastian's scout. Sebastian's scout is, is weaker. <laughs> Dude, this can't be worth it. <laughs> Just stop. Stop it. This cannot be worth it. I mean, there's not a lot more to scout, but are you serious? This is so funny because every time he goes to attack Sebastian's scout, Sebastian's scout runs away. Which is probably why he's continuing to try and push the zebra in the first place. But Sebastian, <laughs> he doesn't want, he doesn't want the zebra to be stolen. It's the only zebra that's alive on the map right now. <laughs> this is so funny. This is ridiculous. This is so extra. <laughs> Look, like right there, he could have gone for a hit. 
He doesn't go for the hit. And Sebastian's probably just like, damn, dude, well played. And he's just going to let it happen. And Matador wins the Zebra War. What in the world, man? That's crazy. Who needs scouting intel when you can just push a zebra across the whole map? Bam. Oh, wouldn't that be so funny if he shot it with the TC? Okay. Worth it. What a moment. Um, Still an extra zebra here, by the way. That zebra is now dead. So difference of approach here. Uh, Matador has added a barracks, which I assume means he's going to make militia here. And Sebastian just found out because his scout was doing the zebra dance. Uh, just found out that this was walled in. So he actually had to batter that down, which Matsudor would have gotten a notification for. Ooh, both scouts are now one hit away from going down. Both scouts now three on 3 HP because Matsudor ran into the villagers. And Sebastian looking to make things messy. He still hasn't chopped out, by the way. Uh, and Matsudor is a little bit closer. He's 20 wood away on that tree. But Sebastian doesn't know there's militia, and he's got a piece out of here if he sees these militia. Three militia could be a big problem here. So I think I prefer El Matador's position right now. And having spoken with him before, he did mention the importance of the middle control here. Uh, we'll check the resources collected. It's still very close, honestly. And Sebastian... As long as he doesn't lose a villager here, I feel like this trip wasn't that big of a waste. Because now he forces his opponent in making some army. And now he can prep some walls for all this, right? And he's going to wall in his wood line. The militia shouldn't find much value here. It, it's sometimes easy to forget that these are red's walls, though. Sebastian just needs a palisade. Palisade doesn't get the palisade down. And... The villagers are stuck, and he has to delete the mill! Thank God we're Malians, and, and our buildings are cheaper, but dang. All right, militia pay off. Militia would definitely pay off if villagers killed. I mean, it certainly made life difficult for Sebastian right now. Yeah, it's not bad. He's freely taking his berries. Sebastian is not. Sebastian will be the first to feudal age, though. Hasn't built the barracks yet. Has now built a dock so he can start to fish. And Matador is making a dock, but he is making a dock to block. Or a dock to block and also a dock to rush. I don't know, but this does block passage. Uh, but it, it's also extremely inefficient for fishing ships. So what I could see being really strong... Now, he doesn't know that his opponent's docked where he did, and, and there's a lot of things that he's unaware of. But if he were to go to gold right now... And then use this dock to make fires. As Sebastian may be making a dock to make fish. You know, if the fires pass through here and kill the fishing ships, it could be really good. It's interesting, Sebastian's actually making a galley. I think he might be making a galley because he wants to block. Um, he doesn't know that Matsador has already chopped through and docked. And he wants to have the galley behind the wood line. I think that could be part of it. The language in this wreck is, must be from Matador's game. How on earth is anyone ever supposed to learn German, dude? Look at that. That's advanced to feudal age. What? Vorangestritten. I guess it when you speak it, it's not as crazy as it. That's still like 25 characters. Sorry, Germans. I'm never going to be able to learn your language, but you're all very wonderful. Archer range. For Skirms, uh, well, Matsador has seen the range coming up here from Sebastian, so he's probably expecting archers. Militia are just attacking random buildings at the moment. And Matsador currently has Sebastian penned in. No gold income, so can't make a ship here, though, for Matsador because he made the militia. Still not taking gold. I'd really like to see him take gold. I feel like you've got a villager here and a galley. Be a pretty big invitation. Hmm. German isn't actually that hard to learn, in my opinion, as an American that learned it halfway anyway. Okay, got it. I'll take your word for it. 
I, I'm not at a point in my life where I have time or interest in learning another language. Um, I, I am very jealous of people who have learned other languages. Like, a lot of my audience speaks at least two languages, right? Like, if you weren't born in a country where English is the main language, you probably know the language you, you learned as a child and, and also English. Not always, but there's a lot of examples of that. I'm very jealous, but I'm... You can't teach an old caster new tricks, dude. I don't have it in me with everything else going on in my life to have the, the motivation to do it. Another dock for Matt's door. So he's still not making ships. He's just using the, the docks for the blocks. And he now runs under with the skirms. There's no army to stop skirmishers right now for Sebastian. So this could be a pain. So he's placing these gates. And, uh, Matador is just gonna leave. Interesting. I mean, that is a lot of idle time, I guess, for Sebastian. It's been a weird game, but Matador clearly doesn't care about the water. Or Sebastian, at least, is being aggressive on the water. Uh, only one fishing ship for now, but he's gonna add a few more now, and he's, he's gonna have Navy eventually breaking his way through here. Hmm. The thing about English is that our simple words and grammar come from German, but most of our words over two syllables come from French and Latin. Yeah, I definitely knew that. Yeah, I was going to say that, but uh, I wanted to to make history whiz and chat look good. So, yep. I agree. Archer range is going down, but I'm pretty sure Matador is not expecting archers from his opponent anyways. Because he sees the stable here, and the stable is a fresh stable. Fire Galley does eject from the dock, but there's still a lot of pressure coming here from Sebastian. And it's just one dock remaining here for Matador. Who is going to lose this dock, it seems like. I think, if anything, you want a demo here. Demo and then a fire would be really good. He's just been sitting here with his skirms attacking farms, because when farms are being attacked, farmers can't work on them. In terms of res collected, El Matador has collected more wood and he has collected more food. It has been the gold count that has separated the two of them. Seems like Matador just wants to maybe boom. But if he has an interesting dilemma here if he's going to lose this dock. Because he'll lose his fishing ships. Looks like he's already lost his fishing ships. You don't want to have too many villagers next to the shoreline because the navy's going to be there. So he's actually moving over here. He does have a scout here. So I think he might be considering a TC in this area, which I haven't really talked about much yet, but there's lots of stone and gold there. What an interesting game. The main theme that I've noticed on this map is that uh, I think it can be very clowny in that a lot of players will go heavy on gold with civs like Bohemians, Malians, I remember seeing it. And they'll use the market a lot. Um, but because there's a decent amount of gold here, and players are pretty close through the middle, we see a lot of monks. I don't think Matador is expecting there to be monks right now, because he doesn't see it. He's probably just feeling good that he's maybe able to take out the stable. He does have to abandon this whole wood line now. Probably should just make a lumber camp down here. I don't know where he's going. The second TC's up. Uh, stable stays up. I'm guessing because the monk was trying to get a conversion there. Sorry, I didn't show that. And two monks on the fields. With five in queue for Sebastian. But I think that will change because he wants text now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't know about the siege until just now. And now he will go for redemption. And he will go for sanctity. Yeah, so now his monks can convert siege. But, I mean, the eco looks awkward for Sebastian right now, doesn't it? He does drop the second town center. He does have eight fishing ships bringing in food, which is insane. Okay, guys, this... This is bad. Like, clicking... <laughs> clicking villagers from this wood line all the way over to that TC... Which took like a minute and a half to get there. Look at this. They're still walking. That is not so good. 
feel like you just grab them, place the lumber camp here. There's no threat that they're going to end up going this way. If you want them on stone and gold, just make a mining camp there. I think that's a stressful uh, a decision made because he's under a lot of stress right now. And the Manganel's converted. Redemption pays off immediately for Sebastian, who has the eco lead because he has fishing ships. We'll have two town centers, which is the same as Matador. And uh, converts the scout as well. So uh, looking pretty good for Sebastian at the moment, at least in terms of map control. He does need to make sure he doesn't lose his monk snowball, though. The thing about a monk is you convert enemy unit, which is great. But then pretty soon they can convert again. You get five or six of them. and Or seven or eight or nine or ten or seven thousand because he's going for two more monasteries. And then the snowball completes. Earlier in this series, uh, it was game one, which Matsudori had crazy game. He was also up against a lot of monks. And he went for light cap. So I think he's thinking about the same here. But I think it's going to be mainly castle defense that keeps him alive. And we've officially reached that point of the game where players goths and you're like, okay, what bonuses are they working with right now? Not seeing too many bonuses at play. Well, these eight fishing ships in the north still bringing in food. We'll see Sebastian focus on a few more farms here slowly but surely and... Man, it sucks you have to make a defensive castle because of a mangonel your opponent converted. Like, this castle could have gone up anywhere else if this mangonel was never on the other side. I'm sure Sebastian probably would have added siege anyways. He would have made a siege workshop and worked for it himself, but... Panic times for Matador. Overall worker efficiency is pretty close. Over the last couple minutes, it's been a problem, though. And Redemption Monks doing Redemption Monk things... Sebastian is just thinking, how can this guy possibly hurt me? I'll convert his houses. I'll add another dock for a few more fishing ships. I could even bring this villager around for more fishing on his side. And I I don't know what Sebastian, uh, what, what Matador can do right now. He's never able to get the scouts pumping. So the stable will be converted. So he has to delete that. There's a blacksmith, too. He doesn't have any blacksmith upgrades. Has to delete that. He's got an army of two monks, two militia, six spears. And he's just he's spending his days deleting houses right now. <laughs> deleting buildings. Which is so painful. Uh, cab archer. Interesting. Uh, Sebastian ends up deleting that. And Sebastian just dropping a castle here. There's always this line of golden stone along the front of your base. And so he, he's just going to just protect that here. Militia changing sides. Militia spearman battle is not the most exciting thing ever, I know. And Sebastian still looping around this backside. Coming into this series, after two rounds, Sebastian was 4-2. Um, he won both of his sets 2-1. to one. He beat Hart. And he beats target. 2-1. Good results. Right now, it's looking like he is probably going to win this series 2-1 as well. Which, after three rounds, would give him six wins, which is really respectable. Still has to face up against Nikov. And still has to face up against Z40 in this group. And thus far, Nikov's only played two rounds, and Nikov has 3-0'd everyone. He 3-0'd Matsador, and he 3-0'd... I think it's just Z40. Nikov's got some big names coming up. But yeah, this, this eco is just horrible. Like, I'd love to be more positive for Matador right now. But he's like... He's got enough stone to make two castles. What does he do? Like, maybe you chop through here. And then maybe you YOLO over here and drop a castle. And hope that Sebastian has opened that up or something. But... It seems like this is going to be a race to Imp and Trebs, maybe? But now Gabetto's come out of this castle. And oh, God... Oh, this is so painful. Second denied castle in the game. Uh, in the series, sorry. For Sebastian against Matador. The other one was denied at 90% and never completed in the game in the first game. And Matador still ended up winning that game, which is nuts. 
But yep, both are on the way to Imp. Seems like Sebastian's faster. But Sebastian will be able to make a second castle too, which would mean that he'll win the Trebor. And yeah. Not sure about the infatuation with Goths, guys. Heart went for Goths on Spiral against Sebastian in the uh, series that they had played in this group. And Goths lost there. I don't know. Maybe people think that Sebastian is very weak against Goths. Listen, I'll be the first to say it. Goths are... Goths are way better than they were after the somewhat recent recent buff, right? Where the hunt lasts longer. And I get it from the land control perspective, maybe. Because this feels very Socotra-ish, but it isn't Socotra. You're not quite as close. There's water elements, and you need Sib bonuses that last you the whole way through the game at a high level. The Goths just aren't one of those Sibs, man. With the Gabettos and the Monks and the Siege, everything's just done the perfect job right now for Sebastian and uh, is the final game in the series so I'm sure Matador doesn't want to call this he's hoping that his opponent's not in the way to end that's the thought process but I think he might end up tapping out once he sees that his opponent is in him faster than him Gabettos are such a nice unit here and kill villagers very nicely very good against infantry perfect against the goths might be one of the best units you can make against the Goths, honestly. So, I mean, Matador isn't seeing that Sebastian has, has cut out here yet. So, maybe there's a world... He also... I don't think he was even spotted over here. So, he's maybe thinking he could hold here and expand his eco in the sides. Uh, Sebastian coming out with one trap. Dropping another castle now. I think he will aim to go for hand cannons as well. Because now you want your castles for trebuchet production and not Gabetto production. Malian universities work faster. So we'll see chemistry and it'll be it'll just zoom right in. What's your army, man? If you're Matador. I don't think you have one. You hope to take out the castles, win the castle war, and then figure it out from there. Eight on food, ten on wood. Villager here from Sebastian. Villagers. I think he initially had a villager, and then I showed that there was a villager attacking um, that villager, and I think that vill got converted. We even see a tower there. And the Gabetto are through. Sebastian has played very well, and El Matador is making my life difficult as a caster right now by continuing to fight. But it is his right to fight. And fight he might. And um, he's soon going to be out of sight. And uh, be very contrite. Uh, did I say might and right? Sight. No, I said sight. Um, the game's not very tight. Um, I don't know. Anyways, uh, insert word that rhymes with all of that here as the Trebor is going to go Sebastian's way because he has more of them. And even if he were to lose the Trebor, I think it would be very difficult to ever find a way to, to get yourself out of this one. The, the re <laughs> I don't know if I've ever seen a player with so little food and wood in the bank at this stage of a game. <laughs> He's got less than 30 of those resources combined. And Sebastian gets another 2-1. But, okay, so let, let's talk about this. So, again, Sebastian, six wins after three rounds. He's got Nikov, and he's got Z40 left. Z40, he'll be the favorite. So, I think, at the very least, you say Sebastian's probably going to end up around eight wins. He is in a position to fight for first place with Nikov, if you think about it. Having beat every player so far, 2-1, to one, and he hasn't played Nikov yet. If he can beat Nikov and then get wins against Z40, which is one of the promoted players like Matador, you could see Sebastian up around 10, 11 wins maybe. Um, it's tough for me to say right now, because like Nikov is, is my favorite in the group. But it's tough for me to say that Sebastian can beat Nikov, but honestly, Nikov 6-0 and oh after playing two promoted players. Nikov has not played Hart. Nikov has not played Sebastian. So I just, I, I haven't seen Nikov actually play those games yet. I don't know what type of shape he's in. It's probably phenomenal. Yeah. 
Sebastian's playing really freaking consistent, though. For Matador, it's not great. Uh, but I still think he's got a chance at survival. He's basically going to be fighting primarily for fourth place, you've got to think, in the group. And actually, let's uh, let's go to our Statifract sheet here and actually show the odds, shall we? It's tough because there's still lots of games to be played, but I like to look at this stuff. Okay, so here we are. Is this updated? No, I don't think this includes the games. Okay, so we add the series, Sebastian Matador. So Sebastian won two games. It doesn't matter the order. All right. So the odds tell us it's actually way worse for El Matador than I expected. <laughs> but he does have a 0.0005% chance at first and a 0.01% chance at second and a 0.44% chance at third and then a 5% chance at fourth place. Really? Is that really the case? He's got two more rounds up against Z40 and up against Target. I mean, Target just has one more win on him. I mean... Hold on. Let me give my boy Matador some chances here. This math, is, it's going to scare him. One sec. Target. So, Matador lost 3-0 to Nikov. Let's just say Nikov beats Target 3-0 as well. Which isn't the wildest thing ever. Then what? Then what does this show? I don't know when that series is happening, by the way. Listen, I think from here, Matador, he has two sets, right? He has a set against Target, and he has a set against Z40. I think if he wins both of those, 2-1 minimum, I think he stays alive. That's what was happening in my mind, because he gets up to six wins. It would obviously depend on the results that the other players get, too, in the sets. Okay. Yeah, so if Target were to get 3-0'd by Nikov, then suddenly the, this is more along the lines of kind of what I was thinking here. So for Target and Z40, when you're up against Nikov, get one win somehow and then obviously you got to win your sets against El Matador. But the way I see this group right now is uh these are the actual results here. Let's see. Uh the way I see that group is Nikov is first or Sebastian is first. But those guys fight for number 1 and number 2 and then Hart is likely third. And of course Liquipedia um has updated for us here. Yes. So yeah, interesting series. Hope people enjoyed that one. Uh, very interested to see how the sets, including Target, Z40, and Matador go from here. The next round for Nikov and Target should be versus each other. Hart Z40 will be interesting. And then we've got like Z40 versus Sebastian, Nikov versus Hart, Nikov versus Sebastian, Hart, Target, Matador, Z40, and beyond. My most... Ex the most exciting sets, in my opinion, in terms of the total standings uh, from this particular group. Matador and Target. Oh my god, that's so important for both of them. Matador Z40 is really important for both of them. It looks like yesterday, Target beat Z40 2-1. to one. And then probably, like, I think Nikov Sebastian was another big one, right? Because right now they're number one and number two. And both of them are going to be fighting over first place. Probably. It is possible that Nikov gets 3-0'd in the next three rounds. And then potentially is relegated. It's possible. It's possible. It's very unlikely, but it's possible.